Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about programming for games with Python. It's worth mentioning Python because it really a very widely used programming language. It's a very good entry-level programming language. It's also used professionally in a lot of contexts. So it's something that you could start learning as a beginner. It's very beginner friendly, but it's also a language that is used by people in industry and commerce for a wide range of tasks. And there's some good game support for Python. In terms of game development, Python isn't really used at the professional level for creating games, but it is sometimes implemented in different game technologies and game engines as a scripting language. So it can find its way into professional game development in some ways. And because Python is one of the main programming languages used on the Raspberry Pi, you'll find that there are a huge range of resources for people wanting to get into Python, including some of these ones from the Raspberry Pi Foundation's own website and lots and lots of example projects, including a whole range of programming ones designed to help you build up your skills from a beginner level. And some of these are also, you know, touching on different elements of game development as well. So there's a whole range of resources for learning Python and becoming, helping you develop your, your Python skills. If you're going to be developing games with Python, then you're going to need to use one of these sort of add-on libraries for Python. So Pygame is a set of Python modules that allows you to do and work with game development as well, or the programming development environments included. There are a few for Python. Gini will work for, with Python. Mu is a very good beginner level one and Tony is the one that I'm going to be using just now. So I slightly changed the visual layout of Tony here. Uh, by default, I'll show you how we can get this back. We can go to the tools options menu and we can change between simple, regular or expert. If we go to simple, find that these changes only take place when you restart Tony. So programming back to Tony. And this is the default user interface. So bigger buttons, does it help make things easier? I'm not really sure. So we'll switch to regular mode. And again, we need to close and reopen to see the new version of the user interface. So I've got a simple Python program already loaded in Tony here, because it, it will always open with whatever the last project you had in it will be the project that's open when you reopen it. And this project doesn't do an awful lot, but it's got the structure of a basic Python game. So it's going to create a window for a Pygame window, and I can move it around and I can minimize it and I can close it, but that's all it does. It's not actually doing anything. What I have got is I've created a basic program structure for creating a game. So I have to import Pygame. I potentially I could import the time library to give me other functions. So I'm not really using all of these things. I've set what the window width and height are, set a color for background. When I initialize, I need to initialize Pygame in it set the surface, so that's the drawing surface, that's basically the window, set the properties for that, give the window a caption, and then I can fill it, and then, well, that's my initialize function, so I'm then going to call that function. I've then created an update function. So the update function is just going to listen and wait for the quit event, which we get by closing the window. And then it's going to set a value to false so that we know we can quit the program now. And draw isn't really doing anything just now. I've got a space in here to draw all of the contents that are going to draw in my game. So we're going to see an example of that in a wee second. But just now this is basically minimum. Clear the screen and then update the display after I've drawn everything. After that function, well, this is going to give us what's called a game loop. So initially running is equal to true. And as long as the game is running, I'm going to call update and then call draw. Then we call update and then we call draw. So we keep repeatedly calling update and draw to make the game happen. In the update function, we're going to check for the keyboard. We're going to update the values of different objects that exist in the game reset positions, change the images are being used, and then in the draw function, all of those things then get drawn to the screen. And that will keep repeating until the value of that variable running is something other than true. And that's going to happen here in update when, sorry, when the window gets closed. You could also create other things so that, you know, you maybe have an escape button or something to happen in game that will close the game. And then finally, we quit Pygame to close it down neatly at the end when we're finished. 
So all of that is basically boilerplate to allow us to create a window and the structure for a game. When we've got that structure, I have a number of other examples, but I'm just going to pick this one here. So now I've got an example that also loads a sprite and animates it. So we've got a bit more code in here. It's used the same basic structure. So we have same update and display functions. Only now I've actually put code in there to change which frame of animation I'm using and then to draw, and then to draw these to the screen and to update the position according to the keys that are being pressed and use that position in drawing it to the screen. I'm not going to talk through all the code for that, but I'll just say that just now this is you know about 90 lines of code all in. There is also um, lots more resources you can get for programming with Pygame, including lots and lots of books. So Making Games with Python and Pygame is one book, for example, that is available online for free. So you can download a free PDF and you can read the book online and there's lots of examples of things you can do. And there are many others, lots and lots of resources that you can turn to. I'm also going to show you very briefly some of the examples we can create with Pygame Zero which is a framework that builds on top of Pygame so that we don't have to do all of this kind of boilerplate structure. It's sort of built in instead. What happens with Pygame Zero is the game loop is built in. So we don't need to create the code that's going to make the game loop happen. It's going to create a window of whatever width and height we give it. So as long as we set a width and height, it will create a window of that width and height. And we don't actually have a loop here at all. What we do need to do is have a function called draw if we're going to draw things to screen. And we do need to have a function called update to change the values of things. I have another function in here called update runner, which changes the frame of animation I'm using. I have that running as a scheduled event so that it happens initially after 0.2 of a second, but then it happens every 0.1 of a second. So it's going to happen approximately 10 times per second. Now, Pygame Zero programs don't run from the command prompt using the same commands that Python games do. You need to use pgz run command to run them. But for using Thony, we can just press the run button and it did work. It, this all worked when I was testing it out. So that's my luck in running this. So that's quite typical. So I guess that means I'm going to have to show you how we do this. If I type ls, I can see my folder. So I'm going to open console window and run this from console instead. So I'll change to Python project, change to the PG0 demo folder, PGZ run. I hope I've got this right. And there we go. So I've got it after all. So we can run Pygame Zero scripts and we can see that we've got a very similar program to what we had before, but we've actually written about a third as many lines of code you'll do less lines of code to get the same things to happen if you're using Pygame Zero. And we discovered and solved an unexpected issue along the way. In terms of references and examples for Pygame Zero, you will also find there are some good resources. I think there's a user, Penguin Tutor, who has a Pygame Zero programming series on YouTube. And it's been particularly supported in Wireframe magazine, which is again published by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Every issue, they have a programming example. It's free PDFs to download, and those always use Pygame Zero. So we can download that as a free PDF. But every issue pretty much has a Pygame Zero example. There is now also a bookshelf application that's now in the new updated Raspberry Pi operating system. And what you'll find is that the wireframe is included in the bookshelf. So you've got access to the whole, all the back issues of Raspberry Pi, Magpie Magazine, back to issue 31. We've got lots of the Raspberry Pi books available as well. And some of these, again, will be covering Pygame and, and Pygame Zero. So here's Code the Classics, for example, which I mentioned earlier. I'm not going to be focusing in Python in the remainder of this series, but it's too important a topic to skip altogether. We will be looking at C++ programming on Raspberry Pi, and we may also have a look and see C Sharp game development on Raspberry Pi, and maybe also what game engines we might be able to get up and running. 
that's all for now. Thank you.